Hello, buenas noches, shave peoples. This is Taylor Alejandro once again. I'm coming at you to do my second video. The first video turned out really good. I was actually pleasantly surprised by the fluidity of the video. Uh, you know, I had a pretty good rhythm and pretty good flow going. I'm a little bit nervous on this one. You know, I don't know if I can match that same degree of entertainment. So, I'm um, about to do a shave. It's Friday night, you know, get ready for the weekend. Do a real quick straight razor shave. I'm using Straight Razor Designs Opus X. That's going to be the soap I'm using. It's wonderful smelling soap. It's a uh, tobacco scent. Not that I'm real fond of tobacco, but this stuff smells great. Um, you know, on the other hand, tobacco and I do not agree. No, 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 no. I gotta remember the cameras over here. Yeah, I mean, I love the smell. I love the smell of cigars. I love the smell of tobacco. But I've had bad experiences with tobacco. Bad experiences. For example, you know, my, my dad's family lived down in eastern Kentucky. And so they were used to having their chaw chewing tobacco. All my cousins, you know, they thought it was cool to do the same thing. Hey, let's chew. Let's chew some, chew, let's chaw on some backer. I think how it goes. And, you know, well, hey, peer pressure, right? I'm going to give anyone to do the same thing. Even though, you know, I know my mom would have hated the fact that I did that. So, but I must say, I do love, I do love the scent. You know, I, I love straight razor design and stuff. Anyway, um... As so I was saying, yeah, so one time we go visit my grandma and my cousins down in eastern Kentucky. And I go out in the holler, in the holler, Kenevi holler, Chabby's Kentucky, if anybody watches this and they know about that. You know, that's where they used to dig for coal and, you know, probably similar to deliverance down in that area. I don't know. But, you know, I was walking with my cousin. We was walking late at night, walking out in the streets or the gravel road, um, you know, to talk, and it's been a long time since I've seen him, and he pulled out a can of Skull. If you know anything about tobacco, you know, if you're one who partakes in that, it is a little pouch filled with tobacco. You stick it under your lip, you get a little flavor, and you spit. Hmm. This doesn't taste all good. But hey, I feel like an adult. I'm grown. Look, I'm spitting. So we was doing that, right? I was eight years old. There's the thumb. Eight years old. I knew better. I knew I shouldn't. I'm sorry, I'm out of frame right now. I knew I shouldn't be doing that. But hey, I'm being like my cousin and his parents and all my uncles who do it, you know, down in Kentucky, you chew tobacco. So... You know, we're chewing, and funny thing is, you chew on tobacco and for the first time, or you smoke for the first time, or anything like that, you start feeling a little funny. I'm an eight-year-old kid, I don't know what's going on, I'm feeling a little funny. I'm like, hey, let's go back to my grandma's house, I'm feeling a little funny. Feeling a little funny, man. This, this something ain't right, I don't know if I ate something. Can't be this chewing tobacco I got in my mouth because adults chew it all the time. There's nothing wrong with that. So, we're walking back. I'm starting to feel really cold and sweaty. You know, I think that's what happens. Starting to get cold sweats. Starting to get dizzy. I'm like, man, Kevin, I don't feel good. I'm feeling really sick. I don't know what's going on. You know, but it's a little kid's voice. This is before my Adam's apple came in, and it's barely in right now. But a little kid's voice, you know, so I'm like, Kevin, I don't feel good, man. I don't know what's wrong. Go get my mama. So he goes there, he gets my mama. But in the meantime, I'm still standing on the porch. I'm leaning against the post. Cold sweats. i am lost all my color. Projectile vomiting. Commences. Blech, everywhere. Feed for the chickens, because we had chickens over there. And camera over here, I gotta remember that. Feed for the chickens. Well, hopefully this time I do pretty good. I did really good on my last shave. We don't wanna have no cuts or anything like that. So anyway, projectile vomiting. My mama comes out, she's like, oh, my kid is sick. Mijo, que paso? And so, you know, I'm just like, well, I don't feel good. I don't know what's going on. My cousin, snitch. 
walks out like, I know what's wrong. He's jawing on some backup. Takes off running. He's boogied out of there because he knows we're in trouble. My mom was like, buddy, give up, buddy. You know, I don't know if I got beat. I can't remember if I got beat that time. But it's, you know, it happens. Kids experiment with those things. And so, can you, well, let me get in the frame here. So, you know, that was my first experience with tobacco. I had several others and real similar reactions. It's amazing that, I think I just cut myself. It's amazing that the body's natural reaction is to reject things that are harmful for the body. The body's a wonderful thing. Man, I can't get up this far away from the, I gotta get closer. I wanna tear myself up, so you gotta bear with me as I'm coming in and out of frame. So, yeah, it's, it's amazing, the body. So, in the meantime, you know, you eat foods, you try to be healthy, your body's gonna do the same thing, it's gonna reject things. And it's a phenomenon. I mean, it's amazing how your body says when you're healthy and you start eating something that's not so healthy, you start feeling a little sick. It's great. I try to eat healthy. I want my daughters to eat healthy too. One of the things I notice when I start eating healthy is I start getting a little different flatulence. Camera over here. I start getting a little different flatulence, right? Well, that's not real convenient when you start dating. And I don't know what it is, I don't know what happened, but once I start dating, man, it's like I always had gas. I was never like that before. Maybe it was her cooking. Yeah, I cut myself pretty good being this far away from the mirror. So, um, So yeah, I had some, you know, when you're dating, you really don't want to be passing gas or anything like that in front of your mate, you know? You don't want her to start thinking like, oh, this guy, I don't want to be around him. But it's funny because all my family and all my friends in Kentucky are like, oh, yeah, we have farting battles all the time. So you're flatulating, you're letting go of gases in front of your mate. Okay, that's fine. Maybe after a few years of marriage, I can do the same thing. But not why dating. But you know what? Sometimes accidents happen. It's funny, my friend was telling me. He's now engaged. And the first time it happened to him, him and his um, girlfriend at the time were in bed, cuddling, you know, during the day. Just sit back chilling. And then, you know, he pushed her out of the bed. He kicked her out of the bed. And he starts laughing. And then he did this thing. He said, I don't know if this is some game. He says it's a game a lot of people play. You're on lava. Get up. You're going to burn to death. And so she's stuck between the wall and the bed. And he reaches down and goes to grab her and tries to pull her up. But as soon as he puts force against the wall to pull her up, one slips out. It's a natural occurrence, but hey, we don't, you know, I don't know. It's a little nasty. You don't want to have somebody's butt explosion in your face. Well, he just stopped. And they both start laughing, and he's like super embarrassed about it. He's like, I cannot believe I just did that. I'm thinking, man, I never want to do anything like that. That's embarrassing. And, uh, man, I had some pretty good growth going on. That's embarrassing. You know, I don't want to do, ever do anything like that. Hmm. So, you know, I made it a vow. Always keep everything closed up, you know. I started buying pills. I don't want to have gas. I was good, man. All my dating, never anything ever happened. Well, lo and behold, one day... I can't believe I cut myself pretty good. One day, we are watching a movie. 
Oh, it was a boring movie, so I'm starting to fall asleep. You know what happens when you fall asleep? You lose a little bit of your um, your uh, control, a little bit, you know. So we're watching a movie. I'm starting to fall asleep. It's dark in the room, and I'm just like, oh man, it's you know I'm really tired. I gotta drive back to Cincinnati from Cleveland, and you know just watch this movie. I'm laying there and start to fall asleep, nice and relaxed. All of a sudden. Burr. I popped up like a prairie dog in danger to warn the colony. I'm looking around. I look down at her in front of me. You know, we're on the couch. It's real tight quarters. I'm looking around. She doesn't move. I'm like, okay. Ooh, she's asleep. I lay back down and start snoozing again. Man, I came out unscathed. No worries. Well, I didn't lather up enough. I didn't load the brush up good enough. Bear with me here. Under pressure trying to make the second video as good as the first video. Crazy thing is, history is bound to repeat itself. History is bound to repeat itself. I had to say that those two times, almost broken in Spanish, two times for clarity. History repeats itself. Well, we are one day watching a movie. And history repeats itself. It's a boring movie. Why are we always watching boring movies? So guess what? I start relaxing, start falling asleep. I'm really relaxed, you know. I'm thinking, wow, I'm going to have to drive back to Cincinnati tomorrow. I better get some rest because I'm not going to be sleeping good tonight, you know. Start falling asleep. All of a sudden, se me salió otro. Another, another little slip. I mean, how's this happen? I don't have no control because I'm getting so relaxed. I pop up like the prairie dog. We'll start looking around. I'm like, man, I hope she's asleep like last time. I start to lay back down and she says, yep, you did it again. What the heck? She heard it the first time didn't say anything. That's embarrassing. So... You know, happens once, it's bound to happen again. History will repeat itself. She still married me. We still got married. It's been, you know, six weeks, I guess. So, history repeats itself. We're, um, we got married, went to the hotel. You know, we're going to stay for the honeymoon, or we're going to fly out from the honeymoon. And, um, we're just chilling. You know, we get, we got out of the showers, we're relaxing, chilling, and watching a boring movie. History is bound to repeat itself. It always does. So, I'm sitting there, you know, in my post-marriage going-to-bed outfit. And my skivvies and my calcium seals. I'm sitting there. I'm starting to fall asleep because we're watching a boring movie. Yes, another one slipped. Another one slipped. But this time she was laying across my back on my hind section. I didn't even try to prairie, pop up like a prairie dog. I went and knocked her off the bed. She said. I can't believe you did this to me. The night our honeymoon begins while I'm laying across your hind end. You know, it's embarrassing. I just knocked my stuff over. It's embarrassing, but then I guess after years of marriage, you can have those little stinky explosions and it'd be fine. But the body is amazing, girl, man. I'm, I'm, I'm starting to work off the married midsection, you know, I got a little thick around the sides because, you know, all the dating and everything, so I'm getting back to it, doing some squats in the gym, doing some kettlebell work, trying to get back into shape. You know, need to, need to look good, need to stay healthy for my kids. So, 
You know it's. Hmm, I love to smell this stuff, man. It's sort of um, I don't even know how to describe it. It's tobacco scent for sure, but it's not like you know, it's not like a soft cherry tobacco. It's more like a red man chewing tobacco scent. I don't even know if that's a good description of it. I'm gonna get my jawline because I always have problems there, but I'm not going for like a super close shave. Especially since I just Freddy Krueger inside of my face. And I will upload it for the public to see. Now, you're all going to probably start calling me Scarface or something like that because, you know, I think I need to go get stitches. I mean, you heard the story about my finger. I may go down to Mexico to see the doctor again, you know, see how many he could charge, how much she charged me to put in, like, in a cup this size, probably like 30 stitches. I don't know. Yeah, this is a uh, this is a pretty nicked up shave. I had a I had a pretty bad one tonight. Well, you know what the good thing about a bad shave is? Tomorrow you'll have a good one. At least I will, hopefully. Hopefully I won't wake up with some bad disease or something like that from cutting myself and some infection entering in and. It's still a pretty smooth shave, just minus the bloodletting that we've had in here. So, I'm going to take a look at a couple of things. I'm going to surgically repair myself. I'm going to put in some, um, put on some aftershave. I love the smell of this stuff. All 25 seconds of the smell. I put it on, I walk out the bathroom, and I'm like, Honey, this stuff smells great, smell it. I don't smell anything. It's doesn't last long. 4711, you've been around for since the 1500s or something like that. Why can't you last that long in your scent? You've been around since the 1500s. You've lasted forever, but when I put you on my face, you last 15 seconds. Anyway, Shave World, all my fellow shavers, thank you for enjoying me slicing and dicing my face. I'm going to sign off here so good life good shave enjoy yourselves enjoy your family make sure they all healthy and take care of yourself get in shape like i am doing my squash you know trying to try and build up the muscle again trying to lose all the midsection of man boobs take it easy y'all